Living a changed life in Christ will not be complete if we're not committed to that change. We will not experience the full appreciation of the freedom that's in Christ if we try to leave him out and go back to our old way of sin, or if we try to retain some of that old life. But what are some of the ways that we might fail to realize a complete change in our life? Well, first, when one does not continue to purify himself with God's word. Peter instructs us to purify your souls by the word of God, 1 Peter 1, 22-23. But too often, people do not treat God's word as the purifying agent that it is. He provided his word for us as a guard and to protect us and to preserve us. Those who embrace the changed life of a Christian are to depend fully upon God's word to maintain that new life. There's nothing else that can instruct man in how to purify one's soul because there is nothing else in this world that is free from decay and corruption. God's word comes from him. It comes from him who is everlasting. God's word is everlasting. As Peter wrote in 1 Peter 1 and verse 23, the word of God liveth and abideth forever. And we can only remain free from corruption by continuing to purify ourselves with the word of God. Secondly, when one does not appreciate the process of removal and replacement, then their life is not going to change as it should. When we turn from the old, we must discard it in order to make room for the new. Paul instructed the Philippians to put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which is, or which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, Philippians 4, verses 22 through 24. Paul said to put off that old man, to get rid of him. But too often, we want to hold on to at least parts of that old man. We treat the old man of sin like the mad doctors treated vampires in the old horror movies. They kept digging them up. Well, God instructs us to be holy as he is holy, 1 Peter 1, 16. And God considered those under the old covenant as unclean if they came in contact with the dead, Numbers 19.11. So why go back to the old man and become unholy by coming into contact with that which is dead? God removed the old man when we were baptized into Christ, Romans 6 and verse 4. Friends, we need to leave that which is dead in the grave and live in Christ as a new creature. But thirdly, the changed life requires regular self-examination. Paul reminds us that we must examine ourselves to make sure that we are staying in Christ, 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. We are to examine ourselves against the standard of God's word. And if we are not measuring up to what God would have us to be, then we need to complete the change that we began. Failure to continue to examine ourselves and to grow and change to comply with God's word will cause us to fall, 2 Peter 1, verses 3 through 12. And this is where Peter's admonition in 1 Peter 4, verses 1 through 4 applies. We must compare ourselves to Christ in thought, in desire, in activity, and in direction. We must have the same mind as Christ. We must have the same desires as Christ in obeying our Father's will. We must have the same activity as Christ, living according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Finally, we must set the same course as the captain of our salvation, that course being heaven. Friends, a new life has been av made available to us in Christ Jesus, and we begin this new life without sin being held against us. God recreates us as if we are brand new. He has given us his incorruptible word to help guide us beyond this corruptible world. His plan of redemption places us in his son, Jesus Christ, so that we can continue to be renewed. He has provided us with everything that we need. 
All we need to do is follow him. Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today. And may God bless you with a wonderful day.